Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, September 2nd, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Please keep in mind that energies are fluid and time is an illusion. So just because this is, this is dated for the 2nd of September doesn't mean it has to resonate on the 2nd. It can resonate at any time for you. Yes. Um, yeah, so welcome to September, everybody. We uh, August is officially over. Summer is almost over. We are officially, it, the countdown to fall begins. <laughs> yes? Um, uh, the sound problem should be better. Uh, I did figure out what was going on that was causing it. However, again, just like I said on Friday, it's the nature of my setup here, all right? Um, so I, I have figured out, I, I understood, I came to an understanding of what was going on, um, and I've taken steps to try and, um, you know, keep it from happening again. However, sometimes equipment just malfunctions, guys. Um, I did turn off the, the comments for the last video because it got to a point where it was like, you know, people just kept saying it and it's like, okay, guys, I get it. Um, but I did already explain, you know, I can, I'm only, I can only do so much at a certain time. Um, but I ended up, uh, turning off the comments for that reading, reading for that video, because there were a few people, like it was starting to get a little rude <laughs> the way people were commenting on it. Um, and so I, I turned off the comments. Um, I posted in the community tab that I knew what was going on and I was taking steps to fix it. And even then someone, s <laughs> even then someone said, someone mentioned that it was the same problem on the last video. It's like, what about me posting this saying I'm aware of the situation makes you think I don't know that it happened on the last video. You know what I mean? So that was a little bit frustrating. Um, and someone did mention that, uh, I wasn't the only one having an issue. All right. So obviously this was, and, and it's funny because I was thinking about it and it, and it kind of did feel like it definitely did feel like there was some sort of, um, energetic interference coming through because what we were talking about was really, um, important, you know, it was really relevant. Like I was seeing all of the confirmation in a bunch of other people, a bunch of other information that was coming out about, you know, the new moon in Virgo and all that. And so what we were talking about was very important and it was right. It was pretty much on point, but you know, there was some sort of energetic inf interference going on. So I think that was really a lot of what was happening because even when I was looking through and, tr and, you know, working through a solution for it, it's like, this is, I was realizing that this is something that, you know, at some point or other, it's just going to be out of my hands sometimes. And you know, there's really only, only so much that I can do about it. Like I said on Friday, I am a one man band. And I do not have the ability to monitor my audio while I'm recording these videos. Um, I did buy a microphone because people were saying that the audio was too low and I, I needed a way to amplify because when I started doing morning coffee, I was doing it very, very early in the morning and I had to be respectful of my neighbors and my roommates. It's not so early anymore. Um, and I'm, but I'm still using the microphone so that people can hear me, but I don't have the ability to monitor it as I'm recording the videos. So if anything goes wrong, I apologize, but there's really only so much that I can do. Okay. Excellent. Let's just move on. Um, lots of solar energy I'm feeling like is, is, is kind of bombarding us right now. I do remember seeing Alex miles had posted about a solar storm happening. I believe it happened over the weekend. Um, but just because it happened over the weekend doesn't mean it's not necessarily going to still affect us before or after, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me on when it's happening. I just know I'm experiencing it right now. Um, I did wake up, I went to bed fairly, you know, at a decent time last night, but I woke up at 4am, um, and I had trouble going back to sleep and I was not in the best, uh, emotional space. Um, I wasn't in the best emotional space when I went to bed last night. Um, I'm actively purging a lot of still a lot of the triggering and the circumstances that happened during my, uh, you will call it the twin flame catalyst situation. 
Um, and even some, uh, and it's just, shit just keeps coming up out of the woodwork. Things that I had thought, I had completely forgotten about, hadn't given, hadn't even really thought about in ages. Just memories and stuff are just resurfacing. I did end up watching one of, well, two of, Water Baby Tarot's readings last night that really caught my attention. Um, the first one I watched really caught my attention, uh, just in the title alone, and it wasn't a sign that I would normally watch. It is part of my, my chart, but it wasn't a sign that I would normally watch um, because it, does, it rarely doesn't, it doesn't always resonate with me, so I don't, it's not my go-to, but man, did that resonate, and it just... It started a purge, um, and so I, when I woke up this morning, I wasn't in the best emotional state, but I had, wasn't in the best emotional state when I went to bed last night, which is not ideal, but I had trouble getting back to sleep. When I did get back to sleep, oh my God, crazy vivid dreams, like really intense, really weird, um, it's kind of scary, scary in a way. Um, but then, and so that was a thing, um, and then when I woke up this morning, after after that dream cycle, I had this high pitch um, s a sound, and it's a sustained high pitch uh, ringing in my ears that's still going actually. And I actually haven't experienced this in some time. Now that I think about it, um, it was constant. Uh, I want to say last year, 2018. I moved when I moved in. Actually, when I moved into this apartment, it was constant. I moved into this apartment in August of 2017. And I would sit in my room and I would meditate and I would have this sustained high pitched sound and it would really only happen, I would really only notice it the most when I was in my room and this was during the whole twin flame catalyst type, it's when I was really in the thick of it. Well, it's back. Um, and I do feel like it has a lot to do with the solar energy that's coming through. So if you're experiencing that right now, you might be you might be feeling restless. You might be feeling great. I mean, some of us could be feeling really restless, uh, uh, restless and upset and trauma, traumatized and triggered and blah 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 going through all those emotions whereas other of us could others of us could feel great, elated, um, blissful, joyful. It really all depends on where you are in your journey and what you need to clear out what you need to what the, what the solar energy is triggering or bringing up for you for illumination purposes for cleansing purposes for purging purposes okay you're really just I, I, be patient with yourself and go through this period because all in honesty even though it's really painful you're going through a process that is clearing space for better for good okay for the good stuff to come in and take over all right well not take over but it'll have space for it. you know what i mean okay <laughs> anyway so with all of that said now let's get into the overall the the the, the um the pre-shuffle energies for today so the first cards that came out were justice and the hanged man but it's this side of justice here where we have uh, um again i still i need to you know what? You know what? I'm going to go into the book. And we're going to get an official name about who this is. Justice is 11. Yes, Justice is 11. Um, that side. Okay. This is an image of Amit. Not Anubis. I was saying it was Anubis. It's not Anubis. It's Amit. The demon who awaits the heavy-hearted dead. Amit has the head of a crocodile, the forepaws of a lion, and the hindquarters of a hippopotamus. Three ferocious animals who are unstoppable in, com in combination. Like Ma'at, Amit is fair and just. She only devours those whose heart has determined the, that outcome. And yet, something has gone wrong. The scales of justice have been thrown down and broken, and the sword of truth is trapped in over and overgrown. Without truth and justice, Amit is free to devour whom she chooses, regardless of their guilt or innocence. Now, great. I'm glad we've got that cleared up. <laughs> what I felt when this came out was somebody is in a timeout, energetically speaking. Um, because there is a realization or it, maybe you have realized it and so now you're taking you're, you're kind of putting yourself in a timeout or the universe is finally finally saying to you it's time for you to face this I'm hearing it's time to stop the judgment this could be a situation in which somebody was overly critical or 
overly judgmental. Maybe you've had um, that tendency in your life. And it could, honestly, it could just be that you learned that from, you know, as you were growing up, from people in society, from like your parents, people your, people you looked up to, mentors, grandparents, whatnot, what whatever. whatever. Um, there is also an energy with this justice, with this side of the justice card of someone just running completely amok and doing what it is they absolutely wanted to do, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the consequences, regardless of how someone may have hurt another. Um, there was a lot of self, there is a lot of selfish energy that I'm feeling in this right now for whomever this is. Um, but it's time to set things straight. And it's not like the universe is grounding you or putting you in timeout because for the sake of punishment. That's not the case because um, the, the, the concept of crime and punishment is a three-dimensional human construct, okay? Um, it, well, it's, yeah, it's a human construct, but it's also a, 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 an element of the third dimension, which is that, a, a dimension of dichotomy, all right, um, or opposing sides, right? Uh, two, two, whatever, two sides of the coin. Okay, great. Um, this is not for in terms of crime and punishment. This is for someone to understand, someone to wake up, someone to gain some sort of enlightenment, see something differently, see a different point of view, 11-11 on the counter. Um, okay, so, and it's interesting because what I was hearing while I was channeling this was it's time for you to face what you have done. It's time for you to see who you have become or what you have been doing. And then right after that, the Page of Wands came out, okay? And to me, the Page of Wands is a card of self-discovery, but it's on a minor arcana scale. Um, I do see the Page of Wands as a minor arcana version of the Hermit, which is major arcana, the Hermit being. Um, and the Hermit is a card of self-discovery walking a path towards self-discovery. So, but this is on like a minor arcana scale. This almost feels like someone, it does feel a little childish. It might be, you might be, be taken, you might be taken back to your childhood, to where things really started to get rooted, to where the seed was planted. Um, it just, it, but it also, it feels like whatever this energy is here, okay, with this side of justice, this feels very immature and childish, all right? So I, I almost feel like whomever this is is kind of shrinking shrinking away a little bit in kind of like a little a bit of a childish way, might be feeling guilty, you know, that kind of thing um, because of this. And then, but then also with that, you do have the sun, okay? And, and the sun is a really good thing. Now, granted, it is this side of the sun here where we do have confinement. We're facing some sort of confinement okay but it's for a purpose it's serving it's for a reason it's for a higher purpose this is a good thing that's coming through all right the sun is optimism the sun is the best card in the deck the sun is also illumination seeing things clearly understanding overall energy you have nothing other than the tower and it's the side of the tower where the the mask is being broken okay and you can see that the the tower was hollow all right on the other side, you do have the Seven of Wands. Okay, uh, boundaries definitely need to be learned here. Um, I just, I, the, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Even this Seven of Wands energy just feels like someone is in timeout. I do, I kind of want to call it punishment because that's that may be, <laughs> that may be how you're taking it. If this is resonating with you, you might be taking it as you're grounded or you're being punished. But that's just a human construct. If you're facing some sort of confinement right now, it's for your betterment. It's for your highest good because the universe, your higher self, God, source, creator, whatnot, whatever, is trying to stop you from continuing to run amok and just devour people's souls all willy-nilly just because you feel like it's fun. Now, I'm not saying people are actually soul suckers, <laughs> okay? But maybe you are. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're, you, uh, well, okay, energetic vampirism. All right, yeah, that makes sense. You also could have an energetic attachment to a negative dark being that is using you as a vessel to siphon energy from other people. And that absolutely could be why you might be, basically, you could, think, you could think of this as quarantine. If you don't want to call it punishment, think of it as quarantine. 
okay? But it's mainly, I mean, it's yes, it's for the highest good of everybody, but also it's mainly for your own highest good too, okay? All right. Time out, you're grounded, quarantine, punishment, I don't know. I wouldn't look at it as a. I wouldn't look at it as punishment. Don't, don't really. That's not. That's your ego. That's only going to feed an ego battle. Like, don't look at it that way. I would rather you look at it, or I would recommend that you look at it as a level, a certain level of quarantine, just so that you can get back to the core truth of who we are and compassion, understanding, empathy for the people around you, all right? But also for some of you, this has to do with you loving yourselves, okay? Because in honesty, you are just treating others the way maybe you have been treated or more importantly, the way you treat yourself, all right? So yeah, if you are in this quarantine, then this is absolutely for your highest good because the universe is pushing you towards loving yourself better, okay? All right, guys, wow, we're already 15 minutes into this reading, five, five, five. Um, all right, I'm just gonna do one more pull, which <clears throat> this is, all right, so this is gonna be a longer, re a longer reading. It just is, it is what it is, so whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it. If you guys enjoy the longer readings, then you enjoy the longer readings. If you don't, we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, guys. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the day of Monday, September 2nd, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, um, I'm going to give this three shuffles, but the color today is white which is interesting because I haven't seen that in a long time. Um, purity, all right? Innocence. It's like, it, it's almost as if a reset button has been pushed. We're going through a sort of reset here to get us back to divine purity. And this is just on an energetic level. We're not taught you, I mean, and it's hard to, that's two, it's hard to describe because especially with being in Virgo season right now and having all of these planets in Virgo, there is an overemphasis on perfectionism. So when we say, this is a direct channel, when we say divine purity, it does not mean that you do not have, you do not still have a balance of, dark, of light and dark. That is a little bit of an advanced concept to wrap your head around. You're going to have to redefine what divine purity truly is because in all honesty, 9-11, in all honesty, I've been seeing that number a lot lately, 9-11. Um, that is an activation call. It's like a wake-up call, um, a call to arms for light workers and whatnot. But anyway, um, divine purity is absolutely a balance between light and dark, all right? So take that as it resonates for you. But yeah, the color for today is white. Or at least the color for the message of today is white. All right, let's see what we've got here, kids. For our Monday, September 2nd, 2019. Monday, Monday, September 2nd, 2019. Best messages, please, spirit. Best messages. My eyes are closed, keep that in mind. Let's see what we've got. Monday, September 2nd, please, Spirit. Okay, there's that. Monday, September. I'm also seeing yellow, um, but the yellow is talking about clarity, illumination, understanding, also willpower, all right? Uh, I believe there's like a cleansing of... Ooh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's a, a cleansing of your action space right now. 
bringing your action space back to a sense of divine or energetic purity, okay? Excuse me, guys. All right. Oh, here we go. Okay. So we have the Ten of Cups as your overall energy. On the other side, we've got the Eight of Cups. Okay. We have the Emperor here who I'm just going to... Okay. Yeah. And this is upright. Stays upright. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and say this. The Emperor is in reverse, and he's a little ashamed of himself right now. Um, my grandmother said that to me, because if you saw before I picked it up, he was in reverse, but he had flown all the way over here, and the prayer card, this is a prayer card from, if you've ever been wondering what this is, it's a prayer card from my grandmother's funeral. She passed back in 2007. She was a very important part of mine and my sister's life when we were growing up. Um, and I still have a very strong connection with her. She still communicates with me. She's, asked, she's, asked, she's like a, a guide for me right now. Um, but <laughs> the emperor had flown out here and her prayer card was like basically covering his face. And my grandmother said to me, the emperor is very ashamed of himself right now because of his actions. All right. So this could be you as now the emperor it represents divine masculine energy okay um so this could be you as a divine masculine individual or an individual that resonates uh dominantly with divine masculine energy or this could just be the divine masculine energy within you like say you are an individual that resonates resonates as the uh dominantly as the divine feminine energy okay there are burdens there is strife here we have the ten of wands we also have the Page of Cups, which is an apology, all right? It could also be the Dreamer energy, but with what we're talking about here, this is absolutely an apology. Somebody wants to apologize. Someone wants to make things right. Someone wants to make amends. We have yet another spark, the Ace of Wands. And this, to me, is, especially on this side of the card, with the lightning striking that tree in the background, this is absolutely a minor arcana version of the tower, in my opinion. Okay, and I didn't see that until I started working with this deck because in this deck it's unique in the way that the Ace of Wands is represented. This is the, I guess we could call this the traditional side. Here is the vice versa other side of the card where the lightning is striking, the inspiration is coming in. Now this doesn't have to be a bad thing, okay? This lightning strike, I mean, yes, it's, it's setting a tree on fire, but, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could just be a spark of inspiration, that moment that you get that strong, creative spark, you know what I mean? But here, this is a realization. This is absolutely a realization of one's own um, expression of toxic masculinity, point blank. No if, ands, or buts about it, okay? We have the Ten of Cups here. I'm hearing unrequited love situation. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We do have this Ten of Cups, but on the other side, we have this Eight of Cups. All right? Someone is walking away from this situation. They could be walking away from one individual into the arms of another. Um, you could have a situation in which you know, you have gone through a really seriously tough situation with somebody that did not end in your favor, did not go the way you wanted to, but now you might be, you may be connecting with someone who is actually a much better energetic match for you. That's kind of what I'm seeing in this like dis desolate uh, setting here. These two individuals have found each other and, um, you know, they're, they're connecting with each other. They're finding solace within each other. Um, but also, if you if you rewind a little bit, this could be this original situation. It really could be the original, and that's that's what I'm predominantly. That's what I'm seeing. <clears throat> okay, it is the original situation with this. Well, maybe this is a twin flame situation for you. Maybe not. Who does? It doesn't matter. But this masculine energy. It could be a divine masculine energy. It could be someone that just is just dominantly masculine and is really controlling. Okay, but um, it could be a situation in which. You two came together, you met, you found each other, but there was a shit ton of toxic toxicity. And I don't want, I don't want this to seem one-sided. It could be the feminine counterpart here could have been very much in uh, uh, toxic femininity, okay? Uh, you very well ch much could have been mirroring each other, but for some reason the focus here is on the masculine. I feel like in this situation, whatever 
whoever the masculine uh, counterpart was, they did some really fucked up shit. <laughs> um, um, obviously, take that with a grain of salt. This We are speaking of a spectrum. Okay, anything could have happened. Um, but whatever was happening, it was really toxic. It was really toxic. All right, and there are burdens being carried here. Now, the burdens that feel like are being carried here are number one, the maybe I guess the shame, the guilt, the regret, uh, the remorse of whatever transpired in the situation. But also, there is more, there, there are more burdens being carried as a result of this toxic masculinity, twisted masculinity that is not even associated with this situation. All right, this is. The car basically, I, I kind of feel like this is the karma of expressing this energy so forcefully, willingly, consciously. The, and, and what what I'm feeling like is may has made this situation so fucked up is the fact that maybe this is not for everybody, but for a vast majority of individuals that I'm communicating or channeling for right now, someone here was very conscious of their actions, but still did it anyway. Why? Because they could get away with it. I mean, that's just the nature of our world right now. That is patriarchal society, society at its best. Okay? It's constant. It's running rampant. But, but, someone got the message or is getting the message, albeit most likely it's way too late because I really feel like somebody here has is either walking away, is either in the process of walking away or has long since walked away. And they're walking away for good. They're walking away from this toxic, twisted masculine energy. Now, you also, if this is you, okay, if you are this emperor here, then you could be walking away from this too. I just feel like in some situations, it's too little too late. It doesn't mean that all is lost here. In no way does that mean that all is lost. But for some situations, it's too little too late. But even with me saying that, Spirit wants me to reiterate that all is not lost and at least you got the message. Like, at least you're getting it now. All right? At least you're getting it. That's really all that matters. That literally, literally, especially if we're talking about like a twin flame situation, as long as the individuals have learned their lessons and are now taking action steps to better themselves, that is literally all that matters. <laughs> okay. And that's why we say this twin flame reality is not necessarily all about just being with one individual. Okay. It's more about you coming into wholeness and oneness with yourself, balancing your inner masculine and inner feminine energies, coming into a state of union within, and then that will translate and, and, and be reflected out into your external reality and, and manifest a external union with another individual regardless of whether it's not whether or not it's the original twin or the catalyst or what however you want to describe it all right with that said um i am going to be now that we're in september i am going to be getting back into uh twin flame divine partnership readings um i've been kind of procrastinating on it because i've been trying to figure out how to work it back into my schedule I want it to be a regular thing. At first, I was just going to do them monthly, but that's not enough. We need to do these weekly, so I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to, and I believe my plan right now is to start them, start bringing them back on Sundays. So, uh, just stay tuned. Um, I am, I am gearing up for that now. All right, guys, we're going to move into the clarification section. All right, um, I'm going to start with the tarot here. We're using the Dreaming Way Tarot, which has quickly become one of my absolute favorite decks. Um, and then I do think I want to get some advice from the Lenormand deck. And then we're going to close out the reading with Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala. All right. So let's get some clarity here. Um, 
I really, honestly, what I really want to talk about is what this emperor is going through. Now, I'm just going to say that does kind of feel a little bit spy-ish. <laughs> but honestly, I want to talk, Spirit wants to talk about this because um, Spirit wants to help whomever this emperor energy is, we want to help you understand your feelings and emotions and what you're going through right now because you might be struggling with that. Because as a dominantly masculine being or a dominantly masculine individual, energetically speaking, emotions, understanding your emotions does not come easily to you. So we want to help you understand that. So we're going to talk about this. One last shuffle here. For the predominantly masculine figures, energetically speaking, let's talk about your emotional state right now. What's going on in the masculine's emotions? Don't want to talk about it, huh? Well, yes, you do. All right, there's that. <laughs> well, good. We have the Ace of Wands again. And we have the Seven of Pentacles. Okay, that's a good thing. That is a very good thing. Overall energy, I told you. Four of Cups, unrequited love, missed opportunity. Um, oof. Oof, oof, oof. Okay. Uh, the Four of Cups is also, I'm getting a, a little bit of an energy of rejection um resistance spirit did say rejection i feel like so, well yeah it definitely could be rejection i do feel like some of you masculines are being super stubborn and you're rejecting this opportunity and you've been rejecting this opportunity since it showed up in the form of an external being most likely a feminine counterpart but this doesn't have to be love related, doesn't have to be twin flame related. This really could be anything for you guys, okay? But you, I, I feel like for those of you that are still really struggling, you've been resisting hard body this whole time, ever since this situation kicked off for you, whatever the situation is, okay? Um, but for others of you, this is absolutely representing the energy of a missed opportunity in which someone is now walking away, okay? You do have the Seven of Pentacles with the Ace of Wands. Now, what this is saying to me here, first of all, Seven of Pentacles is an energy of you reap what you've sown. You've made your bed, now you gotta lay in it, all right? But with that said, Seven of Pentacles is also an energy of learning through contrast. And so it's because of whatever you are harvesting right now, whatever you, whatever you have sown that you are now being forced to reap, Okay, because you have no choice here. <laughs> okay, um, there is an inspiration towards the new. Basically, the lesson has been learned, and now there is an inspiration towards harvesting something new, planting new seeds, doing it differently, honoring your, 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 whatever you're, you've planted better. Um, and for those of you that are still in resistance to this, you, this is the opportunity that you have. This is literally the opportunity that you are refusing to embrace. All right. But Hey, don't let me tell you what to do. I'm just, I'm just the messenger here. Let's see what else we have. Nine of pentacles, five of pentacles. Wow. And the eight of cups again. So your emotional state what are you feeling you're feeling the rejection that you put out there <laughs> somebody walked away somebody put on their big girl or big boy pants and said fuck this i'm done i don't need you i don't need anybody else I am going to be the independent badass that I know I have always been and I will always will be and you're just going to have to deal with it and because of that now there are feelings of inadequacy and here's the thing about it the driving force behind all of this behind this toxic masculine energy here these toxic actions has been inadequacy from the beginning but now that now that 
your expression of toxic masculinity did not get you what you thought it would have gotten you, what it has always gotten you in the past, now your feelings of inadequacy are all up in your face. And you are being forced to face them. You are being forced to face them in terms of someone else. So the energy that you put out there, making someone else feel like they weren't good enough, is now coming back to bite you in the ass. Because now that person has walked away and is striving, thriving, independent, all on their own, self-made energy. And now you're faced with the feelings of inadequacy. But that's the thing about it. And this is what we were saying in the beginning. This was the problem. This was at the root of the situation all along for you. Okay, you had just been covering it up with all this. <laughs> Spirit just said darkness. All right, but all this twisted masculinity. Overly dominant. Overly controlling. It all extended from your own inner feelings of inadequacy. Now, you could have dealt with, as you grew up from a child, I'm picking up on this, you could have dealt with this from your father or your parents, all right? They made you feel, he or they made you feel like you weren't good enough. Um, you know, they were super controlling, very much extreme conformists, maybe. But like we were saying in the beginning, this is why someone is facing some sort of quarantine. Because you need to learn to love yourself if you're ever going to learn to love someone else. Okay? Oof. That's pretty heavy. All right, so now let's get some further advice from the Lenormand deck. A little bit more clarity here. And then we'll close the reading. Here we go. Best message, please, Spirit. In terms of this, this quarantine, this time out. Yeah, look at that. Mice. Rodents. Destructive energy. Ooh, card number 29. The, the, this is a woman, but this is a more romanticized woman. I, I'm, getting a, I'm getting a mother energy from this. Not going to lie. I'm getting a mother energy from this. Now, this also could be that feminine counterpart. For those of you that resonate in this way, it could be that feminine counterpart that is walking away from you. And what I'm getting with this mice energy here is uh, interference from others, outside interference. So we could, you could have been dealing with a third party situation. Now, in, that, in terms of that, it could have been maybe like, okay, maybe someone cheated. All right, fine. But that doesn't have to be it. It could be a third party situation in which you have friends or family members that are putting their two cents in or that are influencing an individual or a situation. Okay. For some of you... It was, maybe it was your mother that was meddling in this. For others of you, this is just the feminine energy, okay? The feminine energy is trying to come through here to help, but there's still some sort of meddling with the mice. Underneath the deck, ah, yes, we do have the child. This does absolutely has to do with your inner child. For some of you, this has to do with um, your childhood, Others of you, this is definitely coming back to a state of innocence. Reclaiming your divine innocence. All right? And that is absolutely influenced by the divine feminine energy because we are, in fact, in the age of the divine feminine. The, the feminine is on the rise. Actively, energetically, 
which will eventually translate into physically, okay? But in order for that to happen, well, in order for us to balance out, all right, because there is a shift happening. Yes, the divine feminine is on the rise, but that does not mean we're, we're now swinging into a matriarchal society. I mean, we might swing into that a little bit because, you know, that's just the nature of the pendulum swinging. But ultimately, what we're working towards is the balance between masculine and feminine energy, where they become equals. Not one is better or stronger or greater or more revered or more... Um, respected than the other okay we're looking for full and complete balance or like spirit just said union all right but in order for that to happen we have to deal with the toxicity and because we have been in a dominantly masculine cycle we've been in a patriarchal cycle the ma healing the masculine untwisting the masculine is absolutely a focus untwisting the feminine is also a focus but that's happening as the masculine is becoming untwisted as well okay if that makes sense i guess it does anyway <laughs> let's get your closing message here from the crystal the crystal mandala <laughs> i don't know i can't speak right now the crystal mandala getting back definitely getting back into that inner child energy there you go okay last shuffle here All right, closing message, please, Spirit, for the collective, for today's reading. Excellent. Card number 21, Ascended Master Lady Nada and Rhodochrosite, Sensitivity. And you see that cross there. The, uh, the cross, it, to me, is um, symbol sim symbolic of Christ consciousness, okay? which is an element of the fifth dimension, which is what we're moving into currently, shifting. Here we go, sensitivity. We bring you the blessing of sensitivity. Being sensitive in this world can be tough sometimes, yet your sensitivity is essential if you are to consciously feel and work with subtle energy. Receiving and sending telepathic transmissions, feeling and releasing energetic cords, tingling with exquisite blessings of divine love, sensing the whispers of divine grace, and seeing the luminous sparkling particles of life force dancing wildly and, beautif and the beautifully shimmering auric fields in dazzling and colorful display. To be given the gift of sensitivity to perceive the energetic world is like being involved in the most special, I'm sorry, being invited to the most special and extraordinary exhibit of sacred art. You have you may have struggled with your sensitivity, found it difficult to bear during times of emotional suffering, yet you have a great gift and it will bring you so much joy. If you are learning to develop your sensitivity, we will help you so you too can feel uplifted as you witness the energetic beauty of creation. And I do feel like this is a cycle in which a group of people are dominantly masculine energies are getting in tune, in touch with their sensitivity. <clears throat> Everybody's got it. It is an element of the feminine. And as you connect with the feminine, you connect with sensitivity. All right? Let me see if there's anything else. Um, just this paragraph. Okay. With sensitivity, it is possible to sense, feel, and perceive subtle energies as if they were just as real, if not even more so, than the denser physical forms of your world, like the table and chairs in your home, for example. The desire to do this, to open up to perceive these worlds, comes from an impulse within your spirit to know reality, to understand the truth of existence beyond the physical form. This is not something that has to be frightening. Perceiving and understanding the world of energy can be very interesting, empowering, and exciting. Okay, I'm going to read this one also. Whatever the reason for your increased interest in the subtle worlds of energy, this oracle brings you a message. 
Even if you don't really feel an urge to know the worlds of energy at a conscious level, your spirit does. And so the message of this oracle is brought to you too. There is a loving energy reaching out, reaching for you now. If your sensitivity is already well developed, you will be able to feel it as a sense of love in your heart. If not, know that this higher energy loves you and is sending you a message. It wishes to confirm that it has been seeking to connect with you for some time. You might consider this energy to, energy to be part of your spiritual team of guides or simply a loving consciousness that wishes to flow through your channels to empower your healing abilities or bless you in some other way with healing love, with healing and love. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop there. So there you have it, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.